Hi everyone, welcome back to this series called Finance Current Affairs. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. Before I start with first question, if you have not subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. And if you want the free PDF of this very session, you have to join our Telegram group. Link is in the description below. We provide all the free PDFs over there. Now starting with the first question. That says, which of the following is incorrect about the master directions, RBI credit derivative directions 2022? So last session, I have a monetary policy statement and the statement on development and regulatory measures discussed. There, we talked about the credit derivatives that RBI is soon going to come up with master directions related to credit derivatives. So there I discussed in detail what are credit derivatives, what are credit default swaps, how do credit default swaps work. So if you have not yet watched that session, please go through that session as well. I will not credit default swaps to working discuss There is no point discussing it again. You can go and watch that session. Then only you will be able to understand these directions better. Now, starting with the directions first and then we will come back to the question and answer it. These directions relate to credit derivatives. To understand credit derivatives, you should be aware about what the derivatives are. Derivatives kya hai? Financial instruments hai, jin ki value kisi or underlying asset pe depend karti hai. So credit derivatives are also those contracts whose value is dependent on what? On the credit risk associated with some underlying debt instrument. To take an example, we can say credit default swaps are the credit derivatives. Swaps, options, futures, forwards, these are different types of derivatives hai. So credit derivative ka major type hai credit default swaps. Here what happens if there is a company which is raising some money through the bonds and uh, the investor is hesitant to invest in that company thinking that it might default. Then there are some other third parties which are willing to provide the protection. So if the investor is willing to pay certain premiums to that company, it will offer them the guarantee, the protection that if the company, the reference entity where you are making an investment defaults, then we are going to pay. So that is a contract where you are actually getting protection against the credit risk. So the underlying asset is the debt instrument and associated credit risk. है. So that is a credit derivative contract. Okay, now talking about why RBI wants to come up with new set of directions. So last is the related directions 2013, the directions that relate to credit default swaps. And uh, the credit default swaps play a very important role in the market these days. So it's important to update those guidelines. In fact, if an investor wants to invest in any company, suppose a new company is issuing its bonds, then it's very difficult for this investor to trust the company and invest in its bonds. So in order to give a boost to the corporate bonds market, provide more liquidity, what these protection sellers are doing, they are willing to provide the protection that if this company is in bond default, we are going to pay you. So what is it that more and more people in bonds will invest in bonds? It will get a liquid market, it will get a market developed. That's the major objective of these credit default swaps. And because they play an important role in the market, it's important to have good set of directions on them as well. That's why RBI has updated guidelines. Now let's discuss the directions one by one. So first of all, we'll talk about its scope and commencement. Ki. So uh, on which type of credit, deriv on, uh, which credit, credit derivative transactions are these directions going to be applied? So whatever credit derivative transactions are happening in over-the-counter market or in the recognized stock exchanges, this set of directions will be applicable to both of them. So whether they are over-the-counter market mein dealings or recognized stock exchanges, these directions will be cases mein applicable hongi, and they will come into force from May this year. So this year, se hi ye applicable bhi ho jayengi. Now talking about eligible participants. Who can participate in the credit derivative markets? Is it just residents or non-residents can also participate in the credit derivative markets? So obviously all the residents can participate in this market. Coming to the non-residents, so there are some uh, people who are given this um, or who are basically eligible that they can invest in the corporate bonds, in the corporate or in different debentures and they are granted this eligibility under 
फॉरन एक्सचेंज मैनेजमेंट रेगुलेशन सो उन रेगुलेशन के अंडर जो लोग कॉर्पोरेट बॉन्ड्स और डिवेंचर्स में इन्वेस्ट कर सकते हैं वो क्रेडिट डेरिवेटिव ट्रांजेक्शन में भी डील कर सकते हैं नेक्स्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट व्हाट आर द प्रोडक्ट्स व्हिच आर परमिटेड टू बी डेल्ट इन दिस ओवर द काउंटर मार्केट सो ओवर द काउंटर मार्केट में जो भी मार्केट मेकर्स हैं यूजर्स हैं वो कौन सी ट्रांजैक्शंस अंडरटेक कर सकते हैं दे कैन अंडरटेक सिंगल नेम क्रेडिट डिफॉल्ट स्वैप कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स सो यू हैव अंडरस्टूड व्हाट आर क्रेडिट डिफॉल्ट स्वैप्स बाय नाउ ओके नाउ सिंगल नेम क्रेडिट डिफॉल्ट स्वैप्स नाउ देयर इज अ रेफरेंस एंटिटी अ कंपनी यू कैन से okay against which the risk protection is being provided to the protection buyer right this protection buyer is paying the protection seller some premium so that they provide protection against default of this very company the reference entity so when, when there is just one reference entity against whose risk you are offering the protection that's a single name cds contract agar ek hi reference entity hai jiske against credit risk की प्रोटेक्शन प्रोवाइड कराई जा रही है देन इट्स अ सिंगल नेम सीरियस कॉन्ट्रैक्ट सो देर आर डिफरेंट मार्केट मेकर्स मार्केट मेकर्स वो होते हैं जो आपको एट व्हाट प्राइस यू आर विलिंग टू बाय और व्हाट प्राइस यू आर विलिंग टू सेल सम कॉन्ट्रैक्ट सम काइंड ऑफ प्रोटेक्शन अगेंस्ट द रिस्क सो दे आर द मार्केट मेकर्स द एंटिटी प्रोवाइडिंग द बिड एंड ऑफर प्राइस टू द यूजर्स मार्केट मेकर्स के अलावा जो लोग क्रेडिटिव डेरिवेटिव्स मार्केट में डील कर सकते हैं वो बाकी के यूजर्स हैं सो they can undertake the single name serious contracts in the over the counter market next talking about who can be the market makers and who can be the users in this over the counter market so yahan pe over the counter market pe zyada focus kiya gaya hai and lastly they have issued some directions to exchanges as well jo main discuss karungi sabse pehle baat karte hain ki kaun si entities hai which are eligible to act as the market makers in these credit derivatives सो so, ये टाइप के कॉन्ट्रैक्ट ऑफर करना या इन्हें बाय करना वो होते हैं मार्केट मेकर सो कौन है जो एलिजिबल है उनमें डील करने के लिए सो वी हैव दी स्कड्यूल्ड कमर्शियल बैंक एक्सेप्ट दी स्मॉल फाइनेंस पेमेंट बैंक लोकल एरिया बैंक एंड रीजनल रूरल बैंक ये सब बैंक्स किसी पर्टिकुलर नीचे मार्केट को टारगेट करते हैं या स्मॉल स्केल इंडस्ट्रीज वगैरह डेवलप करने में हेल्प करते हैं सो एक्सेप्ट दीज अदर स्कड्यूल्ड कमर्शियल बैंक कैन एक्ट एज दी मार्केट मेकर्स NBFCs can also act as the market makers. Uh, NBFCs also include certain housing finance companies, certain standalone primary dealers. So if they have net worth of 500 crores, they can also act as the market makers. Then there is Export Import Bank of India. There is National Bank of Agriculture and Rural Development. There is National Housing Bank, SIBB. So all these are also eligible to act as market makers. Now who can act as the users? सो यूजर वो पर्सन है जो डेरिवेटिव ट्रांजेक्शन करता है बट वो मार्केट मेकर नहीं है ओके सो इसको दो कैटेगरीज में डिवाइड किया गया यूजर्स हैव बीन क्लासिफाइड इनटू टू कैटेगरीज द रिटेल एंड द नॉन रिटेल यूजर्स ओके सो टॉकिंग अबाउट हु कैन एक्ट एज नॉन रिटेल यूजर्स सो जो बड़ी बड़ी कंपनियां हैं लाइक वी हैव दी एन वी हैव इंश्योरेंस कंपनी पेंशन फंड म्यूचुअल फंड ऑल्टरनेट इन्वेस्टमेंट फंड सम रेसिडेंट कंपनीज है नेट वर्थ <laughs> then the foreign portfolio investor registered with SEBI, so all of these can act as non-retail users. In ke alawa, jo hai, wo sab retail users honge. Next coming to the protection buyers and sellers for credit default swaps. So, कौन protection offer कर सकता है? कौन किस purpose के लिए protection खरीद सकता है? Obviously यहाँ protection provide की जा रही थी ना कि अगर reference entity default करेगी, then we are willing to pay. So, who can provide that protection? See the retail users can buy the protection only for purpose of hedging. So जो retail users है वो सिर्फ hedging के लिए ये protection खरीद सकते हैं Hedging से मेरा मतलब है कि अपनी credit risk को reduce करना protection against that credit risk. जो non-retail users है the non-retail users can use these or buy these kinds of protection for hedging purpose also or for other purposes as well. So non-retail users hedging or बाकी purposes के लिए भी use कर सकते हैं credit default swaps का लेकिन रिट और protect protection लेने के लिए retail users सिर्फ hedging purpose के लिए use करेंगे Then the non-retail users who can act as protection sellers. So ये लोग तो protection खरीद रहे हैं protection provide कौन करेगा कि ये default कर जाएंगे तो हम pay करेंगे Who is willing to offer that protection? so non retail users like insurance companies pension funds mutual funds alternate investment funds and fpis registered with sebi all of them can offer 
भी प्रोटेक्शन सो इनको अपने रिस्पेक्टिव रेगुलेटरी बॉडी से भी परमिशन चाहिए एंड देन आरबीआई आल्सो परमिट्स देम टू प्रोवाइड द प्रोटेक्शन नेक्स्ट कमिंग टू द रेफरेंस एंटिटीज एंड द ऑब्लिगेशंस फॉर क्रेडिट डिफॉल्ट स्वैप्स सो रेफरेंस एंटिटीज अगेन चूज डिफॉल्ट द प्रोटेक्शन इज प्रोवाइडेड ओके सो द द रेफरेंस एंटिटी शैल बी अ रेसिडेंट एंटिटी हु इज एलिजिबल टू इशू दिस डेट इंस्ट्रूमेंट सो ये जो डेट इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स अभी मैं नेम करूंगी वो रेजिडेंट एंटिटी होनी चाहिए और इन डेट इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स में डील करनी चाहिए तभी उससे अगेंस्ट प्रोटेक्शन मिल पाएगी वॉट आर द डिफरेंट डेट इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स विच आर इशूड इन इंडिया एलिजिबल टू बी द रेफरेंस ऑब्लिगेशन सो इनके अगेंस्ट प्रोटेक्शन मिलेगी और प्रोटेक्शन विल बी प्रोवाइडेड अगेंस्ट दैम दीज आर दीज आर दीफरेंस कॉन्ट्रैक्ट अगेंस्ट रिस्क टू प्रोटेक्शन इज प्रोवाइडेड so what kinds of instruments are they talking about it's the money market debt instruments jisme aapke commercial paper certificate of deposit non convertible debentures jinki ek saath aapki maturity hoti hai wo aa jate hain and then we have different rated and unrated corporate bonds and debentures which also fall under this category then talking about asset backed or mortgage backed securities using existing securities when you are creating some new securities those are not eligible to be the reference obligation so unke against risk ki protection nahi milegi or the credit enhanced guaranteed bonds convertible bonds they are not permitted ye instruments hai jis pe permission hai protection provide karne ki which can act as the reference obligation in the cds contracts then talking about settlement so ye jo bhi contracts hai inki settlement kaise hogi see the exchange the clearing and settlement arrangement is approved by rbi ओके सो क्लियरिंग एंड सेटलमेंट प्रोसीजर पूरा इन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स में भी लगेगा द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स कैन बी कैश सेटल्ड फिजिकली सेटल्ड और थ्रू द ऑप्शन सो कैश व्हेन व्हाटएवर इज द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट जो भी प्रीमियम पे करना है एंड देन व्हाटएवर प्रोटेक्शन यू आर गेटिंग इट्स सेटल्ड थ्रू द कैश एट टाइम्स द फिजिकल डिलीवरी इज नीडेड ऑफ द डेट ऑब्लिगेशन सो देन इट कैन बी सेटल्ड फिजिकली और द ऑप्शंस कैन आल्सो बी हेल्ड टू डिटरमाइन द प्राइसेस एट व्हिच द सेटलमेंट इज टू बी डन ओके and the retail users the contracts involving retail users should be physically settled then coming to standardization koi body hai kya jo standard set karti hai in transactions mein deal karne ke liye yes there is a body which is existing f i m m d a which stands for fixed income money market and derivatives association of india ye kya hai ye ek association it's an association of various scheduled commercial banks public finance institutions different primary dealers are its part different insurance companies are its part and this is a body which works voluntarily towards uh, improving on the working of your bond money and the derivatives market so different dealings honi hai hamari money market mein different money market instruments mein fixed income instruments mein derivatives mein so un dealings ko ye regulate karti hai it uh, regulates them then it provides some standards of what practice what codes should be follow some standards which should be adhered to how they can make sure that the business practices are healthy what ethical code of conduct should be followed then koi naye products ya services practices ke sath aana hai to usko facilitate karna ye sara kaam hai fimm da ka so here this is this FIMMDA in consultation with the market participants keeping in mind ki jo bhi international best practices follow hoti hai ye indian credit derivative uh, ki market related standard set karenge okay it will also provide the trading convention that what should be the standard premium which is charged at what date should the premiums be paid what should be the standard maturity of this contract so sub standard set karna trading convention set karna ye sab iska kaam hai it runs a committee under this about which we will discuss which also provides the mechanism for settlement the procedure to be followed okay abhi hum wo aage discuss karenge next talking about documentation so cds contract mein kya kya mention hona chahiye the cds contract should mentor mention the reference entity against whom the protection is provided jis ke default mein aapke against aapko protection mil rahi hai wo reference entity ke bare mein mention karo then reference and deliverable obligation that if this company is going to default what's the value of contract how much are you going to get compensated for okay if there is some kind of a delivery which is to be made in case of physical settlement so all that should be mentioned then credit even definitions so credit even event ho sakta hai ki wo uh, insolvent or declare ho jaye jo bhi company hai reference entity hai its credit worthiness becomes negative it defaults on making the payment so credit event kya hoga ki jab aisa hoga then the protection will be provided so what 
how we are going to define that credit event that should be mentioned in the document okay ki is case mein hi compensation milega and then what's the method or the procedure being used for the settlement that should also be mentioned next coming to reporting so ye jo market makers hai inko in transactions ke bare mein timely report karna hai within 30 minutes of such transactions the market makers need to report report to whom report to the clearing corporation of india so there is a trade repository with this corporation clearing corporation of india basically sub clearing and settlement cases handle karta hai so they need to be reported about all these transactions moving on to the next slide this is the committee which i was talking about fi mmda a committee set up karti hai the credit derivatives determinations committee and this committee has various market makers users as its voting members iske alawa bahut se consultative consultative members bhi hote hain various large legal audit consultancy firms are also the members of this committee and what this committee does it actually uh, set, develops the procedure for settlement agar cash settlement honi hai ya physical settlement honi hai kya procedure follow karna hai what are the key provisions that should be adhered to related to the credit derivative market so they make determinations about all that thing okay now coming to the last part of these directions ki exchanges ko kya directions hai exchanges ko kya follow karna hai jo ye hamare recognized stock exchanges hai they can offer standardized single name cds contracts with guaranteed settlement so yahan bhi single name cds contracts ki dealings ho sakti hai and they will offer settlement procedure as well so exchanges need approval of rbi agar aap in, in uh, contracts mein deal karna chahte hain exchanges to rbi se permission chahiye and exchanges should ensure that participants are made aware of risks associated with cds agar aap uh, ye contracts offer kar rahe ho to जो भी पार्टिसिपेंट्स हैं उस मार्केट में उनको इसके बारे में अवेयर कराओ कि ये ये हम दिस इज द इंस्ट्रूमेंट दिस मच इज द रिस्क एसोसिएटेड इफ यू आर विलिंग टू इन्वेस्ट देन गो फॉर इट ओके देन द पार्टिसिपेंट्स हु आर पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन दीज सीडीएस थ्रू द एक्सचेंजेस दे आर इफ दे आर द रिटेल यूजर्स देन दे कैन एंटर इनटू सच ट्रांजैक्शंस ओनली फॉर हेजिंग ये हमने पहले भी डिस्कस किया और ये डायरेक्शंस एक्सचेंजेस को भी दिए गए हैं कि रिटेल यूजर्स सिर्फ हेजिंग पर्पसेस के लिए ही सीरियस कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स में डील कर सकते हैं देन द पार्टिसिपेंट्स कैन नॉट बाय और सेल द प्रोटेक्शन ऑन रेफरेंस एंटिटी इन सर्टेन केसेस लाइक इफ द रेगुलेटरी रिस्ट्रिक्शन आर बी इम्पोज अगर कोई टाइप की वायलेशन की है उस कंपनी ने देन आपको उसके अगेंस्ट प्रोटेक्शन नहीं मिलेगी द सीरियस कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विल बी ट्रेडेड ऑन एक्सचेंज जो कि कैश सेटल हो सकते हैं और दे कैन बी सेटल थ्रू दी ऑप्शन एज वेल एंड द प्रोसीजर विल बी प्रोवाइडेड बाई सी डी the credit derivative determinations committee this committee will also provide more rules and all that are to be adhered to iske alawa jo foreign portfolio investors hain they can act as the protection sellers also and protection buyers also in the exchange traded series so foreign portfolio investor jo sebi ke sath registered hai wo protection khareed bhi sakte hain aur protection provide bhi kara sakte hain then uh, the टाइमली रिपोर्टिंग इज टू बी डन आर बी आई ने बताया हुआ है कि किन किन ट्रांजेक्शन की कहाँ रिपोर्टिंग करनी है सो दैट नीड्स टू बी डन लाइक एक्सचेंजेस शुड रिपोर्ट दोशनल अमाउंट ऑफ प्रोटेक्शन सोल्ड बाई फॉरन पोर्टफोलियो इन्वेस्टर्स टू दी क्लियरिंग कॉर्पोरेशन देन रिपोर्ट ऑल सीरियस ट्रांजेक्शन टू दी ट्रेड डिपोजिटरी ऑथराइज बाई आर बी आई विद इन वॉट टाइम पीरियड देन फर्निश इन्फॉर्मेशन दैट रिलेट्स टू दीज ट्रांजेक्शन टू आर बी आई सो ये सब कुछ आर बी आई ने बताया है कि किस टाइम फ्रेम में कब किस को आपको ये सब चीज़ों के बारे में रिपोर्टिंग करनी है नाउ कमिंग बैक टू आर क्वेश्चन वेर वी हैव टू फाइंड दी इन करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट सो फर्स्ट वन इज द डायरेक्शन अप्लाई टू क्रेडिट डेरिवेटिव ट्रांजेक्शन इन दी मार्केट और इन रिकोगनाइज स्टॉक एक्सचेंजेस इट्स करेक्ट मार्केट मेकर्स एंड यूजर्स दे कैन अंडरटेक ट्रांजेक्शन इन सिंगल नेम सीरियस ये भी करेक्ट है नॉन रिटेल यूजर्स विल बी अलाउड टू बाई प्रोटेक्शन ओनली फॉर हेजिंग नो रिटेल यूजर्स सिर्फ हेजिंग के लिए कर सकते हैं नॉन रिटेल यूजर्स कैन यूज इट फॉर अदर पर्पज एज वेल एफ आई एम एम डी ए पब्लिश दी ट्रेडिंग कन्वेंशन फॉर सीरियस कॉन्ट्रैक्ट दिस इज करेक्ट सीरियस कॉन्ट्रैक्ट कैन बी ट्रेडेड ऑन एक्सचेंज कैन बी कैश सेटल और थ्रू दी ऑप्शन दिस इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट सो सिर्फ सी इन करेक्ट है दैट्स माई आंसर इज ऑप्शन सी सेकेंड क्वेश्चन भी इन डायरेक्शन से ही रिलेटेड है लेट्स कम टू दैट क्वेश्चन एज वेल सो एफ आई एम एम डी ए इज द एसोसिएशन विच कम्प्राइज ऑफ द बैंक फैमिली डीलर्स इंश्योरेंस कंपनीज रेगुलेट्स द डीलिंग्स इन बॉन्ड मनी एंड डेरेवेटिव मार्केट वॉट डज एफ आई एम एम डी ए स्टैंड सो यहाँ पे बस फुल फॉर्म पूछा गया है आंसर इज ऑप्शन ए 
एच स्टैंड फॉर फिक्स आई फॉर इनकम एन फॉर मनी सेकेंड एम फॉर मार्केट डी फॉर डेरिवेटिव एंड ए फॉर एसोसिएशन ऑफ इंडिया नाउ कमिंग टू नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन एंड नेक्स्ट टॉपिक ऑफ दी डे That says which of the following is correctly related to the inflation levels for January 2022. Every month we discuss the inflation level, so the data for January is out. Let's discuss that first. उसके बाद हम ये question को answer कर लेंगे. So सबसे पहले हम बात करते हैं wholesale level की inflation क्या रही है? What's the WPI? So WPI for the month of January is 12.96. Compared to Jan, compared to December, it has reduced. So last month, thirteen point five six three, it has reduced slightly to twelve point nine six. But still, it's in double digit for the tenth consecutive month. So abhi bhi bahut zada high inflation hai. So a slight reduction is seen because of some milder inflation in terms of manufacturing, fuel, and power sectors. So in areas me come. प्राइस राइज हुआ है जिस वजह से हमारा डब्ल्यू पी आई थोड़ा सा कम हुआ है बट स्टिल इट्स वेरी हाई ड्यू टू हाई फूड प्राइजेस एवरी टाइम फूड इन्फ्लेशन इज द मेजर रीजन बिहाइंड इन्फ्लेशन लेवल राइजिंग सो लास्ट मंथ नाइन पॉइंट फाइव सिक्स वॉज दी फूड इन्फ्लेशन विच रोज टू टेन पॉइंट थ्री थ्री एंड दिस इज द मेजर कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटर दैट वाई डब्ल्यू पी आई इज स्टिल इन डबल डिजिट देन इन्फ्लेशन इन इफ यू कंपेयर द इन्फ्लेशन लेवल विद लास्ट ईयर पिछले साल जनवरी में टू पॉइंट फाइव वन थी एंड नाउ इट इज ट्वेल्व पॉइंट नाइन सिक्स रियली वेरी हाई ओवर द ईयर क्यों इतनी ज्यादा इन्फ्लेशन बढ़ी बिकॉज ऑफ द राइज इन प्राइस ऑफ मिनरल ऑयल फ्रूट पेट्रोलियम नेचुरल गैस मेटल्स केमिकल्स फूड आर्टिकल्स इन सब चीजों के प्राइस बढ़ने की वजह से एक साल में ये डब्ल्यू पी आई इतना हाई हो गया है नाउ कमिंग टू रिटेल इन्फ्लेशन इसका इंडिकेटर क्या है सी पी आई So CPI was 6.01 percent in January. So finally, ये RBI के tolerance band को breach कर गया. RBI's tolerance band is 2 to 6 percent और ये पहुंच गया है 6.01 पे. And why we have seen such a surge? Because of high food inflation, high consumer goods and telecom prices. Food inflation is again the major reason behind rising CPI. जो 4.05 percent थी December में वो बढ़के 5.43 हो गई in terms of retail inflation. ओके, सो लास्ट ईयर ये कितनी थी? इट वाज 4.06 एंड इट नाउ इस 6.01. सो आरबीआई प्रोजेक्टेड व्हेन आई टॉक्ड अबाउट द मॉनेटरी पॉलिसी देन द आरबीआई आल्सो कम्स अप विद द इन्फ्लेशन प्रोजेक्शंस. इट वाज 5.3 परसेंट फॉर द करंट ईयर. आरबीआई ने अपनी प्रोजेक्शन चेंज नहीं की है. दे वर एक्सपेक्टिंग that because of the base year effect it's going to rise okay so aap dekh sakte ho kuch past months ki wpi and cpi levels so now it's after 7 months that again the rbi threshold is breached isse pehle june mein 6.26 pahunchi thi uske baad threshold ke andar aa gayi thi and it was reducing and then now we are suddenly seeing the rise again right so these are the inflation levels coming back to the question which of the following is correct So wholesale inflation कितनी है 12.96 correct retail inflation 6.01 this is also correct CPI is within RBI's tolerance band नहीं CPI क्योंकि 6.01 है which is beyond 2 to 6 percent so third is incorrect first two are correct answer is option B now coming to last question and last topic of the day that says RBI has been conducting financial literacy week every year since 2016 and why it is doing so to propagate the financial education messages on different themes to the public across the country so is year ki theme kya hai what's the theme of this year this is what they are asking talking about the financial literacy week every year rbi conducts financial literacy week is week mein rbi zyada se zyada financial education logo tak pahunchata hai it tries to make people more aware about different financial different financial aspects to so through different banks or through direct marketing it's actually trying to promote financial education among a larger audience the theme for this year is go digital go secure we are seeing that a major push is given to digital transactions these days but there are security issues which are arising isi wajah se rbi ne safe banking practices safe thing uh, safe digital banking practices related notice bhi nikala tha which i discussed as well so this has been the theme selected for the week in 2022 so 14 to 18 february ye wala jo week hai ye financial literacy week hai okay where rbi is promoting a lot to go digital and make sure that you are actually entering into secure transactions 
This theme is one of the strategic objectives of National Strategy for Financial Education 2020-25. So, ye ek, uh, is strategy ki baat karu. So, there is a National Center for Financial Education, which is a kind of a non-profit organization run by RBI, SEBI and your insurance and pension sector regulators. So, ye milke ye body run karte hai, National Center for Financial Education, which focuses on making people more financially educated. So, unko sikhana ki they should uh, go for insurance products to get the protection. They should secure their retirement, going for the pension options. They should invest in more financial markets. They should go digital. So, ye sab cheeze basically focus hai is strategy ka. Okay. So, this theme, go digital and go secure, is actually one of the objectives of that very strategy. Is very uh, awareness campaign mein focus kya rahega? the focus will be on convenience of digital transactions ki logo ko batao how convenient it is to shift from a physical settlement to the digital transactions how secure it is to go for digital transactions logo ko lagta hai online pay karenge hamara card details idhar udhar chali jayengi hamare amount account se paisa nikal jayega so we need to tell them that it's secure proper measures are taken to ensure the security and then protection of customers will be ensured that is also the objective that uh, people need to be made aware of. So banks, RBI ka help karenge ye information disseminate karne mein to take this information to a larger audience and this during this campaign, in fact during this entire month of February, RBI is going to provide financial awareness messages to the general public. So coming back to the question, go digital, go secure, option D is the answer. I hope this session was useful for you all. With this, I would like to end up this session. Thank you so much.